Hi, everybody. My name is Aaron Shea, and thank you for joining me for this Habitat Now. It is my honor to welcome artist Michael Behrens from Germany. This is a different format we're doing for this Habitat Zoom. It's more of a Q&A. We have some pre-written questions, but obviously you're invited to join me um, and ask questions as well. We're celebrating his opening of his exhibition titled The Drift that opens up the day after Thanksgiving here in Royal Oak, Michigan. Um, it's it's already set up, actually, and I'll get into that in a minute. So without further ado, I'm just going to take over your screen and start with a little presentation because visuals are key here with these fun Habitat Zooms. So kicking over, news for the world. Our Glass Coast Weekend is planned again for February of next year. It is also going to be at the Ringling College of Art and Design in their sound studio as the previous year. So... Things will be a little bit different this year, planning-wise, a little more laid back, but it's going to be an incredible weekend. So if you want to escape the freezing temperatures, you want to dive into a, a wonderful weekend of glass, a lot of artists will be down there as well. There'll be special things that we've never done before. So plan on coming. Uh, mark your calendars today. <clears throat> yeah, Be in Florida and be ready. That's what it says right there. Uh, a glass art fair is online. Please check it out. Share it with those who haven't seen it yet on social media. We're selling work from this exhibition every day. It is the third uh, year of this virtual presentation. We're adding more things. Just get over there, check it out, tell everybody you know. Um, the Habitat Glass Tour is planned for July of next year. There, I keep mentioning there's spaces. Every time I do one of these little talks, two or three people sign up. So there's limited space left. If you want to check out this glass cruise that's going to go to Europe, Bert and Kathy have been doing this kind of thing since the 90s, the founders of the gallery, and you get to go to the studios, you're going to be on a glass uh, a cruise boat, experience museums, home tours, it's incredible, uh, sign up today. The Gas Conference and the Glass International are happening in June, many of you heard me talk about this many, many times, plan on being here, it's going to be spectacular. Exhibitions on display in the gallery, just two quick ones, uh, Deanna, uh, Clayton, and Stephanie Trenchard, as well as John Moran's Blown Away show, come and see those if you haven't yet. And then uh, on uh, December 3rd, we're rounding out Not Grandma's Glass with our last presenter for the year, who was a winner in 2021, artist Morgan Peterson. Prepare to see something incredible. And I think this might be my last one. I got so many of these. The, the Masterworks auction site is online. It's a new auction site. There's an auction that's going on for live bidding December 2nd, I believe. I believe it's December 2nd. But check it out on Habitat.com. Go to the top. There's 71 auction pieces. So... With all that uh, on the side, so the day after Thanksgiving, this show opens for Michael Behrens. There's also a secondary show uh, I'll talk about later, uh, Thomas Halvichka, but we're here celebrating uh, Michael's career and work, and we're going to be doing a Q&A. But if you stick around at the end of this Zoom, we're actually going to do a walkthrough. We have a video walkthrough of the presentation in the gallery, so you can kind of see it. We're about 95% set up, and the works look spectacular. So thank you for being here, Michael. It is incredible to have you. Um, the ground rules, we're going to have no technical questions during this presentation, but you're welcome to type your questions in the chat and share questions that are on your mind. And Michael, say hi to everybody. Please join me. It's an honor to have you. Uh, you've been with the Habitat family for such a long time. It is incredible to have this, your second solo exhibition here at Habitat. Hello, Aaron. How are you? Doing? Nice seeing you. You too. Uh, first of all, I'm a little bit confused because I just see your face. Is it possible that I see mine too? This is a setting in your um, uh, version of Zoom. Above your, my face, or anybody's face, there's little squares and buttons up there. Ah, uh, no, like... no, I'm, uh, okay, thank you very much. Yeah, here yeah, I am. <laughs> yes, uh, Aaron, uh, thank you very much. Uh, it's really nice for having me. And uh, I think we are working like, I don't know, over 10 years together and I browsed the show. You sent me a link just shortly before about the, like the five minutes film you have done. And for me, it was very nice to, to see some pieces which I haven't seen for ages. Yes, so yes. thank you very much for putting the show up with the sea forms and also landscapes on the wall, like the yeah, wall panels. It was a uh, Rob Bambro, our, our um, gallery manager set up the show. It looks fantastic. And then, um, there's a, a great variety of different tones and colors of your work, and we'll get into more into that. So with this exhibition, we kind of want to do a Q&A with you talking about, you know, uh, your career and your work. And we would all know that you, we, you love to travel and you love to explore the world. And I'd love for you to just tell us a little bit about your world travels. 
So about my travels, like uh, in my youth, I mainly traveled to Europe. But then uh, when we're getting older, while studies, it starts a friend of mine was getting like uh, as a doctor. He worked for a company like Resort Doc, and he was sent to um, very nice resorts where they operate um, a pressure chamber. And I, I always visited him. So I've been uh, mainly around the Indian Ocean. I've been to Zanzibar, to the Maldives, to the Seychelles. It was very nice. So and I also traveled to Africa. After the studies to, to Addis, I've been in, um, in Damascus long before the war and all around Europe, of course. Gotcha. There must be an amazing experience you have in every location. And I know you absorb so much as you travel. And a big fan of the above and the below. And that's what we'll talk about a little bit today. So you sent me some some videos, which I managed to yes. hammer through this morning and get in this presentation. Yeah. It was a lot mm -hmm. of work, but uh, talking about your process. So I did my best to sort them. I think I'm about 100%, but I'll definitely uh, yeah. let the videos play. And if you want, you can talk about the videos or we can continue asking questions. You can kind of tell me. So how um, I can uh, talk out of the ops while the, the videos are running. Uh, normally, I said before, no technical questions, but uh, I will show you a little bit. So uh, these videos are just made with the with the telephone while we are working something in between. So it seems a bit a little bit rough. So um, I think you just started it again, Aaron. Is this right? Yeah, I'm trying to get it to work properly. The videos are very short, right? So they, we can kind of kick through them. But yeah, there, here's a question for you while we're going through the video here as it's playing. Um, you you are quite a master of the color and the material. Is there a favorite color you enjoy working with, or are they all kind of on the same? So kind of um, plane? yeah, I mainly like like the strong color combinations. I'm like a kind of known for like uh, red and orange in combination with gray depending on the piece. So, and also this is a very difficult uh, color combination for casting and annealing. So this is my favorite ones. Gotcha. I have a, a piece of yours in my personal collection that has the grays, but it also has the pinks. Oh, yeah, yeah. It is a beautiful work. And now uh, yeah. we're cutting on the videos. On the video so far, you can see like I'm, I'm cutting the foam. So I really like uh, working. I'm working like a sculpture. I would say a sculptor who is um, working with the medium glass. So um, first uh, I'm working on the model, like you can see, and afterwards I'm making the molds, but uh, you will see it um, in the video anyway. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Let me kick this down. So when does, why do I keep stopping? Oh, it's oh, whatever, I'll just keep playing it. So I wonder why, like, people ask all the time because they see your molds in multiple different pieces. Like, um, how does that work? Like, you make the molds out of foam, which I can tell. And how many times do you use a mold for sculpture? It's a good question. So I'm using a mold or I'm using a model? So, mm -hmm. no, no, you are asking, uh, like... I'll, um, I'll, I'll ask both. <laughs> so you ask both, oh, of course. Like, um, I could... Uh, like the, the model is used uh, two or three times, but in different colors and different color combinations. So each model is unique. And uh, when we are casting the molds, you're just able to use every mold once. Mm -hmm. After the piece is melted in the mold, we have to completely break it. And uh, in case you want to use the same model again, we have to make a new mold. Uh -huh. There you can see I'm um, like finishing touches on the mold and also the kind of the uh, Batuto technique on the surface is in the model. So it's not totally grinded afterwards. It's already in the mold, but uh, we have to kind of clean it and repair it after melting because of the size of the pieces and the temperature. We have lots of, we call it fleshing in the mold. Uh, fleshing, fleshing is like the texture, right? No, fleshing is when the mold is breaking. You will have some marks. Mm, you will see oh, it gotcha. afterwards. Uh, there you can see they're like, uh, I, I'm sitting on working on the casting channel. Like this is a gray 
placing and behind me, like I have three kilns in the studio, two for melting and one for drying. You can see the uh, the size of the kilns. So behind me, it's like uh, in feet, it's like seven by seven by twelve feet the kiln. Um, so when you're making these works, how close do they come out in your vision from, um, you know, your idea of what you're making when they actually come out of the kiln? How close is it in you know in your mind? So, of course. 100% like I wanted it to you know, like <laughs> over the um, over the years, I have explored first to work uh, on the pattern in the objects and afterwards more with the shape. I think in the 15 or 20 years experience make me the casted objects are really close to the pieces I wanted to have. Of gotcha. course, sometimes we have kind of little surprises, but normally not. If we are trying new um, color combinations, new shapes, new arrangements. Yeah. Gotcha. Like before you could see, um, we um, arranged the model for casting and just like when we are casting the big molds, we are working in a team. Normally, like uh, with this, we were four people. And uh, the mold you see, when it's dry, it was in pounds around 1,200 pounds. But when we work on uh, the buckets are from silica sand and plaster, like silica powder, and each bucket is mixed by hand. We have a kind of um, vanish driller for it, but it's poured by hand, 1,200 pounds. Wow, that is some major scale, my friend. You are a wild man. Yeah. You are wild, man. Let me see what I got. Well, let's keep watching this because if I kick out of the yeah, video, so it's I think not it really. Uh, is it my computer? It's not really fluently. It's a little bit. It's as good as we get it in Zoom. The uh, okay, okay. I haven't plugged into my computer, but it always runs yeah. as touch choppy. But yeah. in the replay, in the replay, it'll be smooth as as a, as a, as a ice they say or something like that. So yeah. we'll continue on with the questions. Let me get through the rest of this. Look at them pushing around all the plaster. And you're wearing these masks to protect yourself, I see. Yes, of, of course, because we are um, when we are we are working with grinded silica, and when you work with grinded grinded silica, even if you are uh, glass grinding and polishing, it will uh, the fine dust will stick to your lungs. Mm, that's brutal. So you have to be really careful. Um, that's a heck. That's a heck of a drill bit. What are you doing there? Yeah, because uh, well, right now the mold is uh, over a thousand pounds and we have to flip it. So mm. there's no way to flip it. So we have to drill it because we have the inner end wireframe. And right now it's uh, like it's, the mold is hard after one or two hours. And uh, we are putting a kind of uh, steel tubes in it. You can see it. And right yeah. now, because I say with big molds, the most difficult part is to flip the molds 180 degrees because the model is still sticking in the mold mm -hmm. and we have to release it. This is some people say, or some colleagues say, I'm doing it quite, quite rough, <laughs> but uh, finally it will work. You will see afterwards, <clears throat> there's another video. The mold is, uh, we turned it 90 degrees and you will see the model sticking in the mold. Hmm. So here you can see the gray thing again. This is the casting channel made of clay. But uh, depending on the shape of the mold, the casting channel right now is stick to the casting surface, but the model is still in the mold. Ha. It's like a giant. And, yeah, and, 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 and for, for the big pieces on uh, across my studios, they are selling uh, cars and they have a big forklift. And sometimes there was really nice weather outside, like you can see. We borrow the forklift. We borrow the forklift to work outside to flip the molds. <laughs> gotcha. So, so actually, the guy you see in the uh, like in the forklift thing, we studied together like uh, twenty years ago. Oh, really? Sometimes he is giving me a hand. So actually, this this was one of the biggest pieces. I've done for so far, like in the gallery. And actually you sold it, I don't know, in 2016. 
it was like the finished piece was like uh, 480 pounds. Hmm. Oh, yeah, right. I remember that. So piece. there you can see the uh, there's just one uh, wood plate for protection, but the green thing is a mold which still fits in the uh, the model which still fits in the mold. Right now, if I turn my screen, I don't know if the people can see it. On the left-hand side, you can see the mold behind me. There it is. I, I apologize that Corey asked a, a, a technical question, though. We're not supposed to ask technical questions. Corey asked, he should know everybody, <laughs> everything about it. So <laughs> He asked, is, what, what kind of foam is that you are carving? Is it hard to cut or, or soft? But um, Depending which... Uh, which model I want to do and which 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 pattern? Like this is a very uh, this was a very soft foam, so it's just around. Uh, so in grams, it's it's around or in ounces, it's one and a half ounces for one liter. I hope that answers. Like your question. forty grams a liter. I hope that answers your question, Corey. <laughs> yeah, no, no, yeah. <laughs> This is you cutting away at the mold. So tell us about your, your, you have a museum show planned next year. I'd love to hear about that. I'm excited yes, to hear about um, that. I think a uh, lot of people also from the States know Frau now in Bavaria. Uh, also Erwin Eich used, used to live close to it. So for next year, I have uh, my first uh, retrospective show. So uh, there will be over 40 pieces in the show. Like and uh, I make a collection from uh, objects or uh, from the past fifteen years. Fifteen so years, the collection. Fifteen and... years. Yes, uh, I'm. Um, I'm able to uh, make these shows because lots of the pieces, uh, which I've made over the years, I can borrow from uh, public collections. So okay. actually, I count nice. it together. I think there will be uh, work. Uh, I've worked for. Uh, three or four years constantly will be standing in one room wow. because the people who knows like this piece for instance for six or seven weeks in the kiln what, right uh, now um what, so before, this is a michael yes. my, my jump in what when is your show so the show in frau now starts by the end of april i'm at this point not sure about the date like the 25th of course, everybody wants to come, is invited. I will make a posting on Instagram and Facebook. And uh, the show is running all through the summer. Okay. Well, maybe you can do a, a video walk around for those of us who yeah, can't yeah. arrive so, to the show. So here you can see uh, all, uh, I'm grinding on the structure, but also with big pieces, uh, my assistant work on it. And... Uh, Maybe some of the other artists, I'm wondering, I'm grinding without water. Depending mm. how you make it, you have to be fast. You can make it, but just uh, on, the, on the surface. This is the reason I'm just moving, moving on and uh, I'm uh, starting on another uh, piece. And this is the flashing I was, uh, I was talking about. You see the, there are some fine marks mm -hmm. in the model. So we, we are uh, getting rid of these. Here's a, um, this looks like more polish, polishing, right? Yes, finally, um, they are not in, the good, in good order, but uh, the, right now, there's another <laughs> one coming afterwards, I think. No, but this is the final polishing with uh, felt or already, this is the old school Czech polishing method. The turning wheel is made from horse hair. It's very soft. And the uh, polishing agent you see, it's we call it it's it's pumice. It's a kind of 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 uh, yeah kind of flower. So this is the pre previous step. Which yes, is... this is the previous. This is Yeji from the Czech Republic, and behind you can see his head. This is Stani, uh, Stanislav Borowski, the, the the young one. Hmm. This is years ago when you were in uh, Yerkov for make a small grinding and polishing project. And as polishing is, I um, really uh, appreciate the cooperation with the Czech grinder. This is a really, really hard work, it grinding like, and polishing. It's like you're going to the gym six hours a day. 
I think that wraps up the videos, right? All right, cool. So yeah. next question for you is how often do you explore a new shape? So actually, um, what is the new, so I have to ask, uh, what is the new shape uh, for you? If you look behind me, um, mm -hmm. I don't know, the, can, does the people can see me? Aaron? That they can, they can also see me. Okay, okay, I'm of also course. in so the studio virtually. If, like if you see the models uh, behind me, I'm um, um, like I, I'm making several new shapes a year. I don't know if it's 10, 20, depending, of, of course, depending, depending on the year and uh, depending on the size of the models. Gotcha. Okay. Like, uh, like the blue piece we see on the screen right now, for instance, this was a, a smaller one. It's like 60 centimeters. So in inches, how many inches is it? Like 18, something like this. This one says 20, 20, 27. Oh, sorry. Uh, 27. So of yeah. course I can make more smaller ones, but for the big ones, it takes a little, little bit more time. So we have a catalog in the works for Michael's show. That will hopefully have at least a digital ver version of before the show comes to be. And this is a, a collection of the work in the show, which we'll be going through as we continue the Q&A. So enjoy the visuals. There's some beautiful works in here. Many of them, most of them are in the gallery. There are a few in Michael's studio uh, as well, but all the all are available for purchase. So next yes, question for you, Michael. Many all are available, yeah. Um, the ones... Aaron, the ones yeah. you picked yesterday evening shortly yeah. by you like were this one from the colors. <laughs> yes, this one. <laughs> I was like, Michael, this why don't I have this piece? This is a beautiful piece. This is uh, actually this piece also was made for a group show uh, from a German Glass Art Association in Frauenau. So this is the first time the, this piece is shown in the States. Yes, it is. Yes. So, and these are, you asked me after my favorite color combinations. There's a gray and a, an a, amber orange. Uh, oh, Corey is asking, how many works are you working on it one time? So, also, um, it's depending on the size and on the kiln run. Like, I'm, I'm working just on one model when i'm grinding uh, when i'm grinding the model but when we when we are preparing the kiln run like w from a smaller piece we can put between uh, four and six pieces in the kiln and besides we are preparing the glass and from a bigger piece we just can put uh, one or two pieces in the kiln and then uh, while the kiln is running and annealing, we are, I'm working on the models. And when they are casted for uh, the kiln work, we are working on the glass and uh, which we are placing in the mold. So it's a kind of going on all the time. So another question for you. Um, tell me about your sculpture, just generally. What kind of experience do you want people to have when they see your work? what kind of experience so um yeah like i uh, said before i'm i'm seeing myself more than a sculptor who is working with glass than a glass artist because actually also when i went to art school there was uh, nothing about glass of course somehow peter's in the audience we met and uh, like uh, Peter at this point was working uh, with blown glass, but uh, I run into the kiln glass accidentally. And um, I try to, over the years, I try to make my shapes more expressive. Yeah, and of course the model and mold making, then it's more, it's more difficult. Yes. Very good. And then I got another question for you over the years, from Howard Cohen in the audience. Over the years, have you changed the kind of glass that you actually use? Um, Much. I've, um, depending, um, I've uh, done uh, several uh, scholarships. And one scholarship was at uh, the shop company in Germany. And they also have a very good technical background. And of course, then I was focusing on, uh, focusing on this glass and I'm using some glasses 
from the States. I'm using some glasses from like some German glasses from, uh, from Reichenbach. The factory is really old. I think 150 years old and but it's mainly depending which kind of structure for instance this is a uh, this is optical glass with a party wear with, with a glass powder overlay there's just one percent color in the optical glass piece and there are some other pieces maybe the next one i don't know which one is coming yes this is a good example this glass is colored all the way through. You can see it on the uh, inside edges. It's more very light, greeny, and to the bottom, it's going um, very, uh, very strong because this is just about the thickness of the glass in comparison to the piece before with the optical shot glass. Yes, yeah. Thank you, thank you, Michael. So here's a very, Easy question. What motivates you to create? What motivates me to create? I think it's difficult to answer. <laughs> mm, when you're working as an artist, I think it's a kind of a passion. And you are, I am like addicted to make art, to make some sculpture. Uh, yesterday you have asked me what's Voltimity also I have done a project but I don't really want to talk too deep about it so I'm diving into photography but also it's a kind of sometimes you need some rest but when the rest is over really it motivates me to create something new which will a kind of when you're working with glass it will last forever long uh, much more longer than me Right. And they'll, they'll, we'll jump into that more when we get to question yeah, on Lennon. Yeah, <laughs> so who are who influences you in your work? In my work, um, uh, difficult to say, like uh, while my studies, um, I was get uh, I was uh, when I was starting, I was uh, influenced by Peter Bremers, I think so. And um, also afterwards, of course belonging to the technic by some Czech kiln casters like if you see uh, the old school like when I was starting my pieces they are made uh, uh, with the old school Librenzi Brichtua casting method I figured out this is the best way so I'm just talking about uh, the mold making they work mainly with clay to make the model, I don't like clay, so uh, I prefer foam, even while studies. Uh, I just got a book and I was reading about their method to cast the pieces. I think there's also some influence from them, but also for me, uh, nature is a big inspiration, but also to uh, visit art shows. It's, I mm. think it's very interesting. I also see some different materials yeah good, good to know so your family has grown and you have a, a baby daughter who's not so much a baby anymore how is balancing life with work and family as an artist yeah Aaron you should know you're with, <laughs> you are with five at home um, so uh yeah life is changing uh, much I think uh, she's the best piece I've ever done uh, <laughs> hard hard work no, it's um, it feels like time is running. When you are, we were just traveling for five months. This is a totally other issue, but time is running. Like from Monday till Friday, the time just is over. Standing up, working, like standing up, taking care of the kid, working, taking care of the kid, go to bed. Um, and I'm very lucky because I have two two days or two half days. I'm I'm taking care of her get her earlier from the kindergarten this is really this is really nice that i have the opportunity mm -hmm. to make them this while she's raising up thank you michael very important question by yeah. far yeah yeah well, very, very important yeah mm -hmm. so the next question is about your ultimate career goal what would you talked a little bit about the work living beyond but tell us more about your ultimate career goal like my ultimate uh, career goal in generally, of course, I like to 
show on, it would be well to show on formal, famous art fairs and that the pieces get into uh, big and known uh, public collections. So uh, I think what is very important what I've to, uh, for, for me, because the pieces will stay much more longer than me on earth that I will, for sure. And for instance, I'm talking about public collections. You have, uh, by accident, we have in Düsseldorf one of the biggest glass collections worldwide. Besides the Corning Museum of Glass and the Victorian Albert in London, we have the Museum Kunstpalast in Düsseldorf, and they have 15,000 pieces in the collection, and even pieces from 1,500 before Christ. So uh, mm. when some pieces are there, I know the, this museum or public collection will exist, hopefully for the next hundred, few hundred years. The, uh, this museum was founded in the 19th century, and this is in really, um, Really, something for me. Good to know. Okay. Good to know. Well, this, this is the goal, and of course, uh, if I'm able to get a piece in the MoMA or whatever, but it's um, it's difficult. All artists want to have the pieces uh, spread it out in the world, from the States to Europe to Asia. I think so. That's true. It's not like you can walk in and just drop one off. <laughs> no, I think you're responsible for it. That's and maybe uh, so, so some pieces will find uh, in your owner, in your museum. <laughs> gotcha. So next question. I don't know why I wrote this one, but I must have read it for a reason. What is the meaning of life for you? Oh. What is the meaning of life? <laughs> it's, it's, I think it's, difficult to say now when i'm now when i have a family i think the meaning of life will change every 10 15 years yeah. so for me right now i'm on the point the meaning of life it's not everything about work of course somehow we have earned some money and i want to be i want to be famous no uh, <laughs> famous is <laughs> uh, in what way it's a kind of uh, difficult, but um, yeah, spend time, spend time with my friends. Sorry, first thing, spend time with my family, spend time with my with my daughter, and spend time with my friends and family. Yeah, and friends. That's 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 it, my friend. That's it. Yeah, well, I think like um, uh. Like if you have like spare time, is it right? And health is the uh, most worst currency you have. Okay, got it. Well, th thank you, Michael. Those are all my questions. If anybody else has questions, yes. let me know if you have time. We have another question too. We'll show, we'll ask later to Michael. I wanted to reward everybody for um, staying around and enjoy enjoying Michael. We have the video tour, which we'll kind of talk over. I don't think there's any audio to it. Yes. Regina took it today of the gallery. It's about 90, 95% set up, but it is an exquisite exhibition that you all need to come see. But we put this up for those of you who wanted an early preview because it's an honor to have you all join us. And it's an honor for Michael to put the show together for us. So many of you know shall this. We, Go ahead. Shall I talk a little bit about yeah, it? for sure. Yes, there was just one, um, there's one Phoenix piece in the show. This was, uh, you have just seen at the beginning. This is black crystal. It's looking like casted marble with uh, some gold leaf on it. And um, like there's a, another series, these are the wall panels. Yeah, we have a collection of wall panels that Michael did up on display yeah. as well. Gives you a, a glimpse of the work in the setup. We're still tweaking it, like I said, but it is a, like the gallery is so dramatic. And having a, a collection of Michael's colorful and impressive works really is a sight to see. And then you in the background there's some of these beautiful wall panels that he's done and been inspired by with his world travels. We gave him the largest room in the gallery because he definitely deserves it. And Thank you very much, Aaron. I appreciate <laughs> it. And Rob really worked hard setting up the show and setting yes, up this beautiful yes. collection. Some pieces are quite heavy for setting up. Like uh, this is a uh, this twin piece is like over two hundred pounds, I think. 
luckily i don't up. luckily i don't have to do that rob and dave do it thank the lord for those two <laughs> nothing they can't do <laughs> that is a beautiful work yeah so yeah so come and see it come and see it live here in, in royal oak come on the day after thanksgiving we have our opening for the show we wish michael could be here but he's with us in spirit and we'll have a copy of this playing this presentation so people can kind of tune into his uh q a there are some wonderful pieces in in this exhibition some old friends right michael yes yes so some old friends i see yes and some new friends um, some new friends too yeah this is a piece from just i've made uh big beginning of the year or end of last year yeah this is a a large a large sculpture yeah and we kind of saw you making the mold for this in the mold making scene yes yes and also you can see the the structure like you yeah. see the the polished surface and the structure is uh, like first grinded sandblasted and acid polish and this picture this piece is much bigger than it looks like in the photos it is quite a substantial work and all of michael's work look incredible in front of the natural light like if i could open the wall right now and show you the colors beaming from the sunlight it would be spectacular a couple of other pieces we have in the gallery from the past too i want to make sure we had a good overall presentation it's kind of like a mini retrospective for you in a way yeah it is, i think <laughs> it's this is not only a mini retrospective <laughs> i think yeah yeah i think this is uh lots of new pieces but in generally there are pieces from the past 10 years in it gotcha yeah. awesome somebody asked how many pieces are in the exhibition i think there is probably if i were to just say off the top of my head i would say probably 20 22 that are on display in the gallery um and then a couple more virtually from michael Barron's uh studio that we yeah. just added as of yesterday so the website we're updating still about 80 percent of the pieces are up there we're gonna get the rest of them up so people can see them all at one location so what but, you what you have sorry for interrupting what okay. you have right now on display is a kind of one and a half years work one and a half years constantly and so that's, that's a good amount of lifetime my friend so yeah come and explore and see the show there's the piece you were talking about apologize for the fingerprints we'll be cleaning it off but there's the <laughs> this was the phoenix piece post leg yes incident <laughs> Like this is made, yeah. I like this to see uh, casted marble, kind of. So this was one of my favorites. It actually looks blacker in real life, but it really has a beautiful appearance to it. Cameras yeah. always try to like white balance and make them look a little yellow, but you know the idea is to come and see them in person, or you can make a video again of each individual piece. Beautiful, beautiful work, Michael. Congratulations, my friend. Thank you very much, Aaron. You have seen a lot, so I really appreciate. It. That's true. <laughs> yeah that's true <laughs> so come and see the show uh come visit us anytime and then uh you know you get a real experience of michael's uh work it's a beautiful blue piece this one's also an incredible treasure another one to give you kind of a a scale you can see there's quite a variety of sizes and scale based upon yeah you know i think what it's very good to see if right now if you see uh like several pieces, like um, every piece, nearly every piece has a different shape. Yep, nearly every piece has a different there shape. There are no multiple shapes. So uh, you uh, before you were asking how many shapes I'm going to make a year, so you can see in this kind of a show. <laughs> so thank you, Michael. Um, so I appreciate everybody joining us today. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. I'm going to click on to the chat. and. Um, People have are commenting what a beautiful exhibition it is. Michael, the last, much. the last question I have for you, do you want me to ask you with the camera on or camera off this time? <laughs> Whatever you want. <laughs> All right, next question. Tell us something about yourself that nobody knows, Michael. Yeah, oh, I love it. I love it. So um, <laughs> what nobody knows. So uh, <laughs> what nobody knows. So um, when I was young, yeah, I was young, around the 20s, First, I was starting to dance. So um, I wanted to be a dancer, not a dancer, but a choreographist. So like from 20 to 25, I've done lots of uh, hip hop lessons. I've done jazz and also I've done ballet. And this was like with the ballet, I think it's one of the most embarrassing, but they kind of forced me to do it. 
And uh, also I've been, um, I've been to London. Maybe some of you know the Pineapple School of Dance in London downtown. Uh, for instance, if you know, uh, take that on all these groups, it was like in the early 90s, there's also, I don't know if it was take that or the, all the other names, they trained down there to, of course they are singing, but when they are dancing, they trained of this kind of, of all the schools. And, uh, but after a few years, I had some uh, problems with my bones and I had a decision, be a dancer or go to art school to make some cultures or product design, so I make the decision to go to art school. A good decision, my friend. We'll have to go dancing sometime. I can't wait to see yes. your, <laughs> your moves left over from the 90s. I'm sure they're spectacular. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, everybody, for joining me today. It was a lot of fun to have this Q&A with Michael and do this kind of style. We may do this some more in the future. Please come and see the show. Please come and get your socks knocked right off your feet. And like I said, there is a, another exhibition opening up for Tomo Slavichka at the same time we'll be covering next Zoom, which will be up on display, which is not set up yet. So prepare yourself, plan to be part of our Habitat family for the rest of your lives. If you have any questions about any of the works, if you'd like to see a price list, everything's available for purchase, contact me, email me, call me. You all know this already. But I want to wish you all a happy weekend. And thank you, Michael, for joining us. It was an honor to have you. It was thank incredible to much, have, have this. And I hope to uh, do this again in the future. Be well, everybody. Have a great weekend. Bye bye. Thanksgiving. Bye. Have Thanksgiving, right? Too. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks Hal. That was a terrific show. Thank you, Hal. Thank you, Mario. Thank you very much. Like, be well, everybody. Bye bye.